OK, so in the last video for today, I wanted to think about how to solve for the other kind of solution. So in the last video, we talked about interior solutions, right? Situations where you have some optimal choice, where you're consuming some froyo, you're consuming some topping. And if you wanted to, you could, could, you could consume a little more froyo. You could consume a little bit more topping. Now we want to think about a situation where what you want to do is you want to either buy all froyo, right? be on this corner, or you want to buy all topping, be up on that corner. And let's think about what has to be true for this to be a solution. And then we can think about how to show that mathematically, exactly the same process we just went through. So the first thing that must be true is you've got to use your whole budget. For exactly the same reason that you had to use your whole budget before, right? More is better. But the second part is going to be a little bit more complicated. You, you reject feasible trades. So your indifference curve is entirely above your budget constraint. And what this is going to mean about your slope depends on which corner you're on. So if we're on the horizontal corner, do we need to have an indifference curve that's equal in slope to the budget constraint? No, we don't, right? In fact, in this case, we, we actually don't have that, right? We have a slope that's steeper than the slope of the budget constraint. If we think about that, this, this has to be true, right? We have to have a slope that's at least as, at least as steep as the slope of the budget constraint, because if we started on a horizontal corner and we had a slope that was less steep, then we would have an area above the indifference curve and below the budget constraint, right? So on a horizontal corner, The indifference curve has to be steeper than the budget constraint. How about on a, on a vertical corner? We use a different color. Let's say that my indifference curve looks like this instead. Right? For a slope with steeper, I'm on a vertical corner, there's going to be an area above the indifference curve and below the budget constraint. Right, so if we're in a vertical corner, we actually need the indifference curve to be less steep. Right? But both of these are part of the same rule, which is what has to be true geometrically in order for our indifference curve to be entirely above the budget constraint. Okay. So how do we turn this into math? It's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to come right from what we've already done. So part one, let's take an example. First of all, sorry, I should have done this before. Let's say as an example, we've got still our same budget constraint, right? 1 half f plus 2t um, is less than or equal to 12. And we're going to have, let's use different preferences so that a corner solution works. Let's say that we've got a utility function that is equal to 2 times f plus t. So our first rule is going to be very straightforward. It's just going to be that we solve our budget constraint in the following. Right? Nothing new here. For our second rule, because the fact that the slope of our difference curve is equal to our MRS, Right, and the slope of our budget constraint is equal to our price ratio. We just need to know what our MRS is, so we can see is our MRS steeper or less steep than our price ratio. So the second is we need to ask is MRS greater than the price ratio at horizontal corner? N is the MRS greater than or equal to, less than or equal to the price ratio at the vertical corner. So our steps for figuring this out 
are going to look pretty similar to an interior solution. Our first step is going to be to find our MRS. Right? Same thing that we always do. The UDF. What's the UDF with this function? Well, T is just a constant, so this is 2 times F plus 4. The derivative of that with respect to F is 2. What's the U dt? Well, F is just a constant, right? When we're finding the derivative with respect to T. So this is just 8 plus T. Derivative with respect to T is 1. So the MRS is going to equal 2 over 1, which is going to equal 2. Right? So in this case, with these preferences, it doesn't matter how much froyo I consume. It doesn't matter how much topping I consume. I'm always willing to give up two ounces of topping to get an ounce of froyo. With these particular preferences, and we'll talk more about this in the future, I never get sick of froyo, right? I'm just a froyo eating machine. It doesn't matter how much I have of either, my preferences never change. So now, once we've done this, once we've found our MRS, right, which is a function of F and T, it's just in this case it doesn't matter, we check our corners. So our horizontal corner, right, T equals zero, and F is going to equal 12 over 1 half equals 24, right? So we look, we evaluate, is our MRS greater than our price ratio at 24 and 0, right? In this case, the answer is yes. We have 2 greater than 1 quarter, so yes. In this case, we have a horizontal quarter. If we didn't have a horizontal corner, we could check our vertical corner. Right? So first we find our vertical corner. We would say F equals 0, and T would equal 12 over 2. Right? Is 6. Is the MRS less than or equal to our price ratio? At zero froyos and six toppings? In this case, the answer is no, right? We do not have two less than or equal to one fourth. And that's what we do, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's identify what our corners are, right? Using our budget constraint, to use our whole budget constraint. And then we just say, is our indifference curve gonna lie above our, our budget constraint? On a horizontal corner, that means is our indifference curve steeper, or at least as steep as the budget constraint? For a vertical corner, that means is our indifference curve less steep, or no steeper than our budget constraint? And that's how you do it. Okay, thank you so much for bearing with me. I look forward to talking to you all about this in, in semi-person, and please let me know if you have any questions.